Hey there, and welcome to another exciting Dazlight tutorial. This is Simon Bennett, and I'm going to be speaking to you today all about effects and creating effects in Dazlight 4. So, if you haven't done so already, I advise that you go and check out the introduction tutorial. It's just a 15 minute tutorial that guides you through the basics of the whole software. In these tutorials, I'm going to be diving down and giving you a little bit more information on all the nitty gritty little parts of these features. So, let's make a start. Effects. So basically, effects in Dazlight allow you to very quickly create scenes with lots and lots of steps without the need to set every single fader value individually. I'm going to patch some moving heads. And I'm going to patch some RGBs. So I shall patch four moving heads. And I'll patch, let's say, 50 RGBs. And then I'll go over to the editor. And then I'll go down here to where it says effect. So there are several different types of effects, which I explained very briefly in the introduction video tutorial. We've got the curve effect, the pan tilt effect, the pixel effect, and the matrix effect. So I'm going to start with the curve effect. So the curve effect basically allows you to take a curve and map it to a channel. So here we've got our RGB light selected. And we can select a curve here. So let's say a simple sine wave. And then we can select a channel here. So we could select red, for example. So here we have the red lights going up and down. And then we can change how the curve looks just down here. So we can change the rate of the curve if we want to slow it down. We can change the size of the curve. So you see now it's kind of freezing at the top for a while. We can change the position of the curve, it's called phase. So if I wanted it to start at 255, drop down, then go back up again, I can do this. You can change the offset, this will move it up and down. And then the best one, this is the phasing. This adds a little delay on each light. You can see here we've got a little tail going on see all the little lights moving up and down the curve and then a beautiful effect here over on the right. So it's really really quick to create different curve effects. Now one of the best things about Dazlight 4 is that you can actually stack different effects. So I could take another effect now, another curve effect. Now this one's still going. I could then take for example a random curve Actually, no, let's try a sine 3. This is a little bit more interesting, this curve. Let's stretch this out a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And I could map this to, let's say, the saturation. So now what we've got is, we've got a curve which is going from left to right, but the saturation of that little pulse we've got there is being changed by this wave. Actually, to make it a little easier to understand, let's uh, yeah, let's do a ramp. There we go. Speed that up. That's a crazy pulse going on there. And we've got loads of different little waves here. Got a strobe. This is really useful. Do a very quick little pulse like this. By changing the rate of this create something like this. So you can combine these curves together to create all kinds of great effects. We have a direction here as well, so we could send it backwards instead. We could pause the curve at a certain point. So if we like the look of that, we can just generate it like so. Or play it back again. So you can basically combine the effects here. Clicking this little button here will actually reset all these properties to the original values. Oh, we've got this great uh, button called random mode as well. This kind of creates a random strobe. So if we speed this up. Yeah, 
There we go. We get some kind of random strobe here. You can change the overall length of the effect here as well. So if you only wanted it to last, let's say, one second. This actually squishes the effect, so it basically speeds it up. But there we go. And then we go over to the generation options, which are down here. So by default, it's going to generate the effect in a new scene. If you want to generate the effect inside the selected scene, you can uncheck this. And this will now generate the effect after this step. If you want to include it on the current step, you just need to check on current step, like that. Include set levels is not important in this case, but imagine you've got a moving head and you've got your shutter open and your dimmer open set manually via the faders or the palettes here. Include set levels will basically include those levels inside the effect. If that's not checked, it's not going to include those levels. So we'll come back to this later. This is more useful on the moving head and the pan and tilt effects. So I actually want to create this in a new scene. So I'm going to leave this selected here. After that, we've got compression. So basically, when you generate an effect, it's going to generate a list of steps here. Now, if there's no compression, each step will be a DMX frame. So each step's going to be 1 25th of a second. If we move this compression higher, it's going to try and use less steps. Now this is particularly useful if you want to create a standalone show. So some of the Dazlite devices have inbuilt flash memory where you can create standalone effects to be run without the computer. But obviously because the memory is limited, the amount of steps is limited. So in this case, you want to be pushing this compression up. But as we're just using this live, we're not so bothered about the compression. And I want to make sure we get all these nice little flickers in here, these little uh, red strobes. So I'm going to take that down to zero. And I'm going to click Generate. And as you see, when I click Generate here, we get a list of steps. Now, if we go over to the next effect, so we're going to do a pan and tilt effect. And for this, I'll need to open the 3D. I've just created a new empty show, just to clear things up a bit. So before we create the pan and tilt effect, we actually need to show a light beam so we can see what we're doing. So to do that, I'm just going to select these fixtures here and I'm going to click here to show the light beam. Here it is. And then I'm going to click here to create a pan and tilt effect. So the lights start moving in a circle here. It's a little bit fast, so I'm just going to make it a little bit slower. I'm going to make it 10 seconds. And over here, you can pick a different shape. So you could have a circle, a line, a polygon, a curve. And over here, you pick your light beam that you want to apply the effect to. So for example, imagine if you had a moving head with multiple pan and tilts, you can choose which particular beam you're going to put this effect onto. So down here we've got the number of points, so you can create more points, you can remove points, you can drag points around here, and you can change the phasing here. So the phasing adds that nice wave, so we could do something like this. Sorry if it's flickering a bit by the way, it's just that uh, the screen recorder is interfering with it a little bit. Okay, so we've got a nice looking effect there. Um, there are a few other tricks you can do in Dazlite, so you can stack effects. Um, you can stack pan and tilt effects. So for example, imagine if I want the first two lights to go left and the second two lights to go right. What we can do is click here to create a new pan and tilt effect. And with these lights, I can select these two on the right. I can tell it to go backwards over here. And now we've got a symmetrical pan and tilt effect. And if I go ahead and click Generate, it's going to generate a scene with my symmetrical pan and tilt effect. So you can again stack your pan and tilt effects. You can mix effects, by the way, as well. So if you wanted like a curve effect, um, like the one we created earlier, and a pan and tilt effect within the same scene, this is possible just by stacking them together and then hitting that Generate button to generate everything into one single scene. So, moving on, we're going to do the pixel effect now. So I'm going to get rid of the 3D, and I'm going to create a brand new show. And I'm just going to add some RGBs again. 
Okay, so this time pixel effects. So pixel effects are great for rainbows and um, really precise uh, kind of effects like Knight Rider. The great thing about pixel effects is the software knows exactly how many pixels are inside your effect. So it generates it knowing that I've got 50 RGB pixels here or 50 RGB fixtures and that's why it's called the pixel effect. And really with the pixel effect it's just a case of playing about and just seeing what you can do. So we can add and remove colours, we can change the size here, so I can change the size of my Knight Rider. We can go just one way only without bouncing back and forwards. If we go to the sweep, you can change the direction of the sweep. Loop the sweep. Add and remove colours. If I just double click a colour here, I can change it. So as you see, we've got tons and tons of different uh, pixel effects. We've also got um, some audio based effects. Now obviously these are generated effects, so you can't really use them live with audio, but if you want the kind of like a, a fancy looking effect, so this is the level meter effect, and this basically allows you to create a uh, like a sound bar. This is using my microphone at the moment. Um, as you see, my uh, my gain's not very high at the moment, so you're not really seeing much activity here. But um, if I was talking more loudly, you would see this going up and down, and we can change the colours and do all kinds of stuff here. And just like before, you can stack different uh, pixel effects on different fixtures. So imagine you wanted one pixel effect here. Then you wanted a different pixel effect, let's say a rainbow effect on these lights. So now I've got a Perlin playing on these lights and I've got a rainbow playing on these lights. And you can change the direction as well. Um, again, let's, uh, let's see if we can do like a symmetrical Knight Rider kind of thing. So imagine I've got a Knight Rider going like this. I could set, uh, let's say, one way only, boost the size a little bit. Then I could do the same on this one. So I could say, Knight Rider, one way only, boost the size. I could select these lights over here. So you see they're happening at the same time at the moment. But if I reverse this, I can then have them come into each other. So you can do all kinds of things here. And then again, just click the Generate button here. Um, you may have noticed with the pixel effects, there are a few other settings as well. So if I click this here, this brings up the Effects Toolbox. So there's a few other uh, things here that we can do. So for example, the Mirror Horizontally that I was just showing you, you can actually do this with one effect just by clicking this. You can add Blur, Sharpen, you can do it in grayscale. Um, you can manipulate the effect by rotating it, putting a filter, repeating the width and the height. So there's all kinds of extra little effects in there. So that's basically the pixel effect. By the way, something I didn't mention before is that you can save and load effects. So uh, normally if you're just using one effect, it's not necessary. But if you're stacking, if you're stacking effects and you're doing some really specific stuff, uh, you can just create a new effect, save it, and then you can load it in later on. Because obviously one of the things about Dazlite is once you've generated an effect, it disappears forever and you can't edit it um, without actually rebuilding and regenerating that effect. So that's uh, when the save and open effect comes in really useful because you could save an effect, create a new scene, load the effect back in, manipulate it, regenerate it. And that's how you can kind of use uh, the same effects in different kinds of scenes. So the final effect I'm going to show you is the matrix effect. So if I just delete this, now I'm going to position my lights in a matrix like so. Uh, I'm going to create a couple of different matrices. So let's say we have something which looks a little bit like this. Okay, so when I create a matrix effect, it actually creates a rectangle that I can drag around the screen and you can just resize this and it will play on any fixtures which are behind the rectangle. So I could do something like this, the burst effect. I could add another one over here. 
perhaps with a fire effect. I'm sure we had a fire effect somewhere. Yeah, here it is. You can rotate these as well, like so, if I wanted a diagonal fire effect. And just like the pixel effect, uh, lots of the effects are the same, but there's a few other options. So for example, you've got media, so you can actually take a video and you could play a video on this rectangle. Let me just uh, spin this around again because it's affecting the other stuff that's going on. There we go. You could actually play a video on this or take an image and layer an image. And that allows you to add a whole host of custom animation. You know, you could even go into video editing software and create your own effects there, export them out, and then play them on this matrix and generate it on the light. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. And that's, that's the media just there. We've got the text effect as well. So we can do scrolling text. Um, for example, if I go here, you can change the text size. Obviously the text is not going to look very interesting on a matrix of just two pixels high, but you kind of get the gist of it. You can change the color, you can change the text here, and you can change like the position of the text, the direction of which it's going to move. You can switch anti-aliasing on and off as well. That's really useful if you've got a small resolution and you don't want like if you want like a really sharp edge to the text, you can just turn the anti-aliasing off. And although it might look a bit ugly on your computer screen on a low resolution matrix, it's probably going to look a little bit clearer that way. Um, we got a few other audio effects again. So uh, we got this level meter um, similar to the one uh, we were talking about before. I've not got a very loud uh, microphone here, which is why it's not very high. You can change the frequency of which that level meter is going to use. And you can also get a bar graph as well. This is quite a funky little effect. Um, there we go. Got a little bit more activity from this one. So this is basically doing a full uh, frequency detection of what I'm saying and then mapping it over some lights. Um, again, you could kind of use this live because you can play a live effect on the uh, on the live screen, but then before you can do anything else, you'll have to remove the effect or save it. So it's not really appropriate for that, but you know, if you want to just kind of generate a, a cool looking EQ effect, you can do that here. And we've got tons of other things, sparkles, random fill. Uh, one of the other ones I like actually is the, um, I think it's the bouncing effect. Um, yes, because with the bouncing effect, you can actually choose the item that's going to bounce around. So you see here, we've got these balls going on. If I go here, I can choose a point. So we've got these things and we can manipulate these, change the, the size of them. Um, but then we've got shape. And with a shape, you can actually choose which kind of icon is going to be bouncing around. I'll just make this a bit bigger so you can see it. Obviously, this is more useful for a bigger matrix. Um, so if we just slow down the item speed a little bit. Something like this. Then we can change the shape here. So we could have something like this. Or something like this. We can change the colors that the shapes are going to use. So for those of you with, uh, with a few more pixels here, you can do all kinds of little animation effects, which are quite cool. And as with the pixel effects, we still have access to all these settings. So if we want to mirror the, um, the effect or uh, if we want to blur the effect, we can do all different kinds of stuff like that. Sharpen, put it in grayscale. Rotate. So that basically summarizes the brand new effect generator. Uh, please send us your videos and your photos, see what you can come up with. And uh, we will be moving on to the live tutorials next and uh, how to control your show live and jump between different scenes and map MIDI and DMX and also use your smartphones and tablets. 